You see, his theory was that most people suffer from plantar fasciitis because of the narrow shoes that they wear, which shove the big toe into a bad position, shuts off blood supply to that bottom part of the foot through the lateral plantar artery, and because of the decreased healing time, sparks this problem. So an important first step in fixing plantar fasciitis is to get into a wider toe box shoe and allow the big toe to spread. So I'm actually kind of happy that Aaron is finally citing research to support his foot fetish, but it also makes him look even worse now because he's misrepresenting and misinterpreting these studies to fit his narrative about the dangers of Nike shoes, Adidas shoes, and all these narrow toe box shoes. The first study he cited showed a reduction in blood flow in the foot after squeezing the big toe um, together with the other toes or maximally adducting it. Now, there are several problems with using this paper to say that narrow shoes increase the risk of plantar fasciitis, especially because it was only an acute study done over the course of five minutes. And since it was an acute study, maybe given enough time, people would adapt to this increased adduction and demonstrate a return to previous blood flow levels. And in fact, that's kind of what happened in this paper. We saw that a third of the individuals actually had an overall increase in blood flow by the end of the five minute period. And maybe even more might have that adaptation if we extended the study over a longer time frame. It's hard to tell, but this is interesting. Last point is that they didn't even track whether participants would go on to develop plantar fasciitis. They just kind of said like, oh, it may or may not happen. We don't really know. And that's the conclusion we should take away from the study. Not that um, adduction of your big toe increases the risk of plantar fasciitis. In order to make that claim, you need long-term prospective evidence on this topic. And we don't have that evidence yet. So a few problems with the study that Aaron cited, the Jacobs 2019 study. In the methods, they say that they go into maximal passive Alex adduction to determine that there's a loss of blood flow. So these are narrow shoes that Aaron would probably tell you not to wear. Look at my big toe. It's pretty much neutral in the shoe and I can fit snugly in there, right? That's maximal hallux adduction, right? I can't go further than that. My foot is not like that inside my shoe. I'm also not missing much range of motion into abduction. So look at this, I'm not, it's a few degrees at most. So most of the time my foot is sitting in neutral, not in the position uh, promoted by the Jacob study. They're also very pliable. So look, they're not like ancient shoes. I can wiggle a little bit in the mesh part so my foot can move a little bit more than what's seen uh, on this representation. So what Aaron is doing here is basically like saying, hey, if your head is upside down, if you stay like that for a while, at some point you're gonna faint. So you should always stay exactly upright. Never even bend a little bit. Otherwise, bad things are gonna happen. There's gonna be degeneration. You know, it lacks nuance. While the studies that Aaron has cited in the past, uh, looking at the link between foot deformities and shoe wear types, especially narrow shoe wear, are real, uh, they're mostly based on shoes like this. Her shoes like this, and I'm not even kidding, they use cadavers from the Renaissance. <laughs> or even shoes like this, these are called crack out. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I've never seen someone play basketball with this. The closest equivalent that we have in modern times are dress shoes like this, which are very stiff. And if they're very tight, um, yeah, could cause problems if you wear them every day. All this to say, we don't really have data on modern shoe wear and foot deformities. So if you want to buy iron shoe, that's great. If you want to buy a millimeter shoe, that's fine. It's just I don't think you necessarily have to based on the data that we have right now. So I would take whatever squat you're saying with a grain of salt on this particular topic, especially since now he has a big financial incentive to you know, promote something that might not be the most objective data.